Hello there everyone, this is your attendant Neko speaking. To accompany you on this trip, I'll be giving you my review of the Honkai Star Rail game released by Hoyo First very recently. This company is also the same one that made Genshin Impact. I have played this game for a week now and get more understanding before I make this video to make this review more accurate so hopefully this video will help you understand the game more before you want to play the game or need more understanding. Alright, let's get started. Honkai Star Rail is a turn-based game with a combination of overworld exploration. In a nutshell, you'll be taking turns with your enemy to act. You can either attack your enemy or provide necessary buffs and debuffs to your allies or enemies. While the game is a world exploration, it's not an open world either. Honkai Star Rail is more of a closed world exploration while Genshin Impact is an open world exploration. The exploration experience in my opinion is a bit awkward from Genshin Impact because the camera is a bit slower and does not have much versatility for exploring. You can double dash and you can jump. So if you see people play this game thinking of the Genshin Impact experience, you'll be disappointed because that's not really the case. However, despite not being an open world game, the world building is still breathtaking. I do wish that we can explore the world more freely, but considering that's not the main point of this game, then that's alright. If you ever play Pokemon and Persona, the gameplay is close to that. Obviously, there are enemies and you do face enemies in the overworld, however you have to approach the enemy to do so. You can either get ambushed, normal attack, or trigger weakness. Getting ambushed by your enemy means they'll have a faster turn to attack you. Normal attack means entering the battle normally, and triggering weakness decreases enemy's toughness, which I'll explain more on that later. You also have the option to trigger techniques where these techniques can provide useful utilities in the battle. Like good enemy games, there are elements. Fire, Ice, Imaginary, Lighting, Physical, Wind, and Quantum. As of now, Weld is the only imaginary element in this game who is happened to be a 5-star character. Assuming that most of you play Genshin Impact where there are elemental reactions, this game is more to an elemental disadvantage. However, the way it works is different. You don't gain bonus damage from doing so, but you have this thing called Weakness Break. When your opponent got their toughness meter reached 0 by elemental disadvantage, their turn will decrease and gain additional damage depends on the element, and gain additional effects depend on the element that triggers the weakness. Certain characters gain more advantage with this feature, such as Sushang and Himeko. Because of this, having a rainbow team is preferable as there is no such thing as elemental resonance in this game or any advantage to gain from having the same elements on your team. It still depends on who you are using and who you are facing, so you might want to think of a good strategy and be playful with it. I will do a separate video regarding to this topic, but if you want to know more about this, then please take a look at this video. Long story short, Think of Weakness Break as elemental reactions in Genshin Impact where it's based on elemental mastery and level. Same with Weakness Break, it depends on your character's level and their break effect but with addition of your enemy's level as well. Of course, we can't forget character's job or we call them as paths in this game. There are 7 paths in this game. Abundance, Preservation, Destruction, Erudition, Hunt, Harmony, and lastly, Nihility. There are several more parts, but they are only relevant in the story, so we will not mention that in this video. Two of these parts are what I call as sustain, being abundance who are healer and preservations are shielders. Three of these parts are DPS, being erudition for AoE damage, hunt for single target damage, and destruction for both and are tankier stat-wise. Finally, the final two parts are supports. We have harmony who are buffers and heality who are debuffers. These two parts also have three of the best weakness break characters, which includes Asta, Sampo, and Weld. Typically, you want to have at least one sustain character, one support, and two DPS characters. You can also go with one DPS character, and the rest are sustaining and supports. Sele is the first character I can think of for this strategy because she is one of those characters that I find to be a selfish DPS with how her mechanic works. 
But again, it still depends on your strategy because even weakness break team is a thing where Asta, who is actually a support, becomes the main DPS. Sampo and Weld can do this as well, but that's a topic for another day. One interesting thing about this game is that you can immediately use your ultimate even if it's not your turn yet. For example, this footage here shows the enemy's turn. My Jeopard has his ultimate ready, so to avoid my characters getting damage, Jeopard can activate his ultimate first to grant each team member a shield. That way, the shield takes damage from incoming enemies instead of the characters. The gameplay is easy to understand. Their tutorial is very easy to understand as they keep it short but understandable. Speaking of that though, you can't skip the story. While I don't mind this because I like reading the story, I don't think that's the case for some people. If you're using Japanese dub as I do, they have long pause men talking. That's just my nitpick but other than that, I personally find the story to be great. Unlike Genshin Impact where most of the characters are already well developed, the case is different in Honkai Star Rail. Spoiler here, if you don't want to know about this then skip to this time frame. They showcase Bronya's problem very well in this game. She has doubts, insecurities, and disbelief about her mother. They also show how rude Sela can get to everyone, especially Bronya. But in the end, they develop and grow closer to each other, even though Sela's personality is still the same. The climax of the Jerolo 6 incident is absolutely fire. They took their time making the Jerolo 6 story because it actually took me 2 to 3 days to finish it, and not once I did try to skip or get bored with the story. It's just that good in my opinion. However, personally, there are some parts where it's not relevant to the story, but it's Hoyoverse, so I can understand that. The boss battle, man, it's amazing. The Kokolia OST, mwah, chef's kiss. You gotta hear it. <laughs> A little bit out of topic here, but I feel like they're hinting at some kind of Sarisa design from Kokolia's design, but again, we'll just have to wait and see. They also let us know Asta's reaction regarding to Arlan's problem and that misunderstandings are happening. And we also see how Asta likes to spend too much money, although she's doing it for the station. Jeopard's argument with her sister is quite intense. They show in the story each character's personality, even their weakness and their unlikable times. And I find that to be a huge improvement from their Genshin storyline. It's kind of odd because I like Jeopard, but after I know the story and how he acts in the storyline, it kind of makes me don't really like him anymore, but I mean I still have him and I still like him anyway. Anyway, most of the time Genshin Impact shows already flawless characters in game. Even after almost 3 years, the only character we see with their most notable traumas and problems are Wanderer, Shunhe, Nahida, and Dehia. Raiden Shogun counts, but I feel like the delivery is not proper. Yula also counts, but her story doesn't really feel about her, and this is the same for a lot of characters where they are mostly NPC story quests than their own. Even though a lot of Genshin characters have their weakness, you can only find them after you read through their entire character story, which is hidden and locked to their friendship level. You also find them on events, but again, events are limited, so I don't really know about that. I find Honkai Star Rail to be not afraid with experimenting their characters as they don't hesitate to show their weakest times or unlikable times in the story. Their voice acting is on point and they show proper emotions in the story. I find Bronya's development to be great and the best selling point. Not only that I get to know her closer but it makes me want to pull for her. I actually remember that I got her and I was so happy when she finally appears on my standard banner pulls. Ah. 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 Ah! I'm stuck. Okay. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 Fuck! So, yeah. <laughs> Same with Sele. I initially don't want to pull for her but I decide to pull anyway because I like her cool and badass attitude in the game. She's not perfect and does not sometimes become a goody to shoes badass character like how they portray Yula and Raiden Shogun. Her personality is very consistent. She knows that she can be harsh but that makes me like her even more. 
Speaking of that, some of these side hustle stories are actually cute and funny. I legitimately laughing when the trailblazer talk to the trash can, carries the trash can, even flirt with the trash cans. <laughs> I'm actually, I actually really enjoy that. And there's a lot more. The trailblazer's character is also quite sassy and I really love it. Now, the most notable thing to take if you're a Genshin player is that most of the interfaces in this game are the same as Genshin, with a lot of retouch of course. The daily quests in this game felt more linear in a sense. You don't have to teleport to gain more rewards from someone, but you can just open this window and gain your rewards from there. Otherwise, everything is the same. They have constellations for packages as Eidolons, weapons as light cones, and artifacts as relics. The UIs when you play the game are also similar with your avatar showing at the right side of your screen, necessary icons on top of your screen, similar hotkeys for quicker access to certain interfaces, etc. One of the most notable differences in this game would be traces. This is basically where you can obtain more talents and upgrade skills in Genshin Impact. It does need more materials, but if you think about it, Genshin Impact also needs more materials but squeezed to only 3 upgradable skills. Other than that, they have different UI designs but nothing else changed much. I see some people complain about this, but I personally think this is a safe move because they know their audience mostly from Genshin Impact anyway, so it doesn't matter right away. Finally, Gacha, or we call them as Warp. Just like Genshin Impact, there are 3 banners in this game. The first is Limited Banner, the second is Light Cones Banner, and the third is Standard Banner. Limited Banner features limited characters that won't come back for a certain period. Light Cones Banner features Light Cones, which also features limited pass and slot Light Cones for the said limited character, and the Standard Banner features permanent characters and Light Cones. Each pool consumes Star Rail Pass or 160 Stellar Jades. If you're pulling in Limited Banner and Light Cones Banner, you'll consume Star Rail Pass and 160 Stellar Jades. You're guaranteed to get a 4-star character or 4-star Light Cones every 10 pulls you do. If you're pulling a limited banner, you won't get 5 star light cones and vice versa if you're pulling in light cones banner. If you're pulling in standard banner, your guaranteed 5 star will either be a 5 star character or 5 star light cones. This is for the limited banner, but you're guaranteed to get a 5 star character after 90 pulls. And if you don't get the featured 5 star character, you're guaranteed to get the featured 5 star character after the next guarantee, which is the same as Genshin Impact's speed system. Standard banner also has 90 pulls speed guarantee, however since there's no such thing as featured characters in this banner, instead you're guaranteed to choose a 5 star character of your liking after 300 pulls in the standard banner and this can only happen once. So in a sense, pulling in the standard banner is not a bad idea. If I were to recommend, Bronya is the safest bet you can get as she buffs your allies and seems to be Bennett of Honkai Star Rail. Her free to play alternative would be Tingyun, whom I can say could use Sora of Honkai Star Rail, but that's a discussion for another day. They also have beginner banner with 20% discounted pulls for 10 pulls, and unlike Genshin Impact where they give you 20 beginner pulls for Noel, Honkai Star Rail gives you a literal 5 star character after 50 pulls in the beginner banner. Obviously, the 5 star character is a premium one, which means you can only get Himeko, Welt, Clara, Jeopard, Bronya, Yanqing, and Bailu. Coincidentally, all of them represents each path. Himeko as erudition, Weld as nihility, Clara as destruction, Jeopard as preservation, Pronya as harmony, Yanqing as hunt, and Bailu as abundance. As for whom you should get a reroll for, this presentation is not for that, so maybe for another day. Now let's pull out some of why you should and should not play this game. Let's start on a positive note. Turn-based game, if you're into this kind of gameplay, then this is for you. Great graphics and animation, good story for story enjoyers, a mix of turn-based and world exploration, although it's not necessarily open world game, both sides of the coin are enough to keep you entertained and learn more about the world of Honkai Star Rail. Free to play, of course Gacha still plays a factor for smoother gameplay, but if you want to clear the game with minimal choices of characters, then these characters are enough for you as long as you are consistent with building them. And finally, plenty of content to play. You have instances to farm for upgrading characters, but you also have other content to keep yourself entertained. It could be possible because this game is still very early, but we'll have to wait and see how this point ages. Now let's move on the negative note. 
turn-based game. If you hate this kind of gameplay, then this is not for you. I feel like turn-based game is one of those genres where either you really love it or you really hate it, which is why I mentioned this twice. Unskippable story, very self-explanatory, so if you're not into the story, then you'll probably hate this game. And finally, the open world experience is a bit awkward. Walking and running doesn't feel smooth, and while it's not relevant, you cannot jump in this game either. Overall, this game's experience is great. I am personally not a big fan of turn-based games, except Pokemon, but this game's graphics, character design, world building, and everything else are great to keep me entertained. This is an irrelevant note, but I kept my game speed at 1 because I like seeing the characters' animations. Huh? It seems we almost reach our destination. Thank you for watching. To keep up with the content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Subscribing and liking the video will greatly help us improve the algorithm. If you have questions or feedback about my services, please don't forget to write down your inquiries below this video. Ladies and gentlemen and non-binaries, we finally arrive at our final destination. Please keep yourself seated until the train reaches a full stop. We do hope you enjoy our trip and we do hope to see you again next time with Neko Express. It is time for us to say goodbye and thank you for boarding with us today. We hope to see you again next time. May the stars lead and protect you to the right path. journey